This is a Hong Kong eBay special solar panel and they advertise uh, 30 watts coming out of this array right here. Uh, I haven't done the checks yet at the garage. I, I just barely got this and before heading out so I couldn't really sit down and and uh, <clears throat> make any test measurements and stuff like that. Right now my phone is completely dead but I have it hooked up to the solar panel now and also my power pack is uh, completely dead as well so uh, it's probably going to take me about three hours, three, four hours to get to the car and uh, I'm going to hike back and see if uh, this thing could recharge my devices as I hike alright, let's hit the road and this is the final test down at the camp six miles away I put the solar panel on the outside of my uh, pack here and as you can see we're really overcast and going through the woods I'll, I'll be like in thick vegetation so I, it'll be even darker uh, both my cell phone and my charge pack here were completely dead I mean if I if I hook the phone up to the charger uh, within a second or two it'll, it'll just peter out it'll stop even the little LED light on this thing here was shut off after about I don't know 30 seconds that that just tells me that this pack was completely dead even with this overcast sort of uh, conditions here it's charging my unit here this thing here in turn the output of this, the battery on this, is charging my cell phone. And my cell phone is being charged. I'm out of range, so I can't even call anybody. I think this little unit here is kind of hokey. When I hooked up the cell phone directly to this port right here, supposedly that's a 2 amp uh, port, 5 volts at 2 amps, uh, the phones will, will start charging, then stop, start charging, then stop. It just depends like uh, you know me getting into the shadows and not in the open and so forth like the panel couldn't keep up to power this and uh, I got enough it, it charged this enough to where I'm actually charging the phone here so to me that's a success for this particular setup and mind you all this equipment here don't don't get hung up on make a model and stuff like that this is all cheap stuff I got on eBay and Amazon just to prove a concept. I do not want to uh, review gear, specific makes and models. I want to review concepts out there. This is all prototype, all this here. This charging pack here is uh, 12,500 uh, milliamp hours. Milliamp hours on the USB port not the 12 volts coming out of this port right here all right so right now I got the uh, power pack here and we're going to test out to see how much amp hours this thing is is uh, actually drawing practically drawing how much capacity it has so it's 12 volts on this line here roughly I'll measure it here in a minute and right now my uh, what is this 150 watt uh, inverter AC inverter and I'm gonna run my this fluorescent light bulb here until it dies and I'm gonna time it to see how long it takes for it before it dies and make the calculations to see uh, how much amperes this battery pack is uh, operating under so here we go I'm gonna turn it on turns on nice and bright Got the timer going, and right now it is drawing 1.3 amps at 12 volts DC. And I'll annotate how much power that is and all the other pertinent information. So, okay, let's see how long this, this light will last until it dies. So, here's the cord going into my inverter here. The inverter is being fed by 12 volts DC and a 12 volts DC is supplied by the battery pack here. So 
So the time is going at one hour and almost 10 minutes, one hour and 10 minutes. The uh, current draw is one amp, 1.62 amps. So it's raising an amperage and the voltage was around uh, 1.10 volts and it's still going but I'm going to stop it right here because going below 10 volts on a 12 volt system is really bad for the battery so I'm going to go ahead and shut her down but uh, it went an hour and 10 minutes uh, and the status indicator here shows that I have one little bar of power left so I'm thinking maybe 10 percent maybe 10 to 15 percent of capacity yeah this is all just uh, to prove a concept not to prove actual gear uh, in some areas like in the desert maybe you could get away with 15 watts of uh, solar panel but in the Pacific Northwest or northeastern states where you get winter like this and hardly any sun perhaps you need to bump up the wattage of your panel to to produce the same amount of power that a 15 watt panel will produce in a desert with constant sun so you play around with those numbers to get that you know your end result your goal for me I, I, I kinda like to go overboard a little bit to see you know to, to charge equipment as fast as I can but I'm gonna have to experiment in the garage and see what's going on so currently this is the hub of all my powering needs this is a uh, power all portable power bank and battery jump starter for small engine vehicles so this car here is not used so much anymore uh, just uh, weekend stuff so it's been in storage here in my yard all this time it's got some juice but not enough juice to uh, activate the starter right there it is so as soon as I crank the uh, engine over I have to take this off as fast as I can because uh, there will be too much current feeding back into the lithium batteries and, and that could cause your batteries to explode so as soon as it cranks over you run out here and take it off immediately so let's see if that little power pack could uh, do this guy here it does so that is pretty cool this little old thing could crank over this uh, four cylinder vehicle I was able to do this to my Chevy Tahoe uh, but I don't know if, if, if the uh, if the batteries are ran completely down that if it'll work or not but uh, you know we all make mistakes and we let our batteries go dry sometimes or go dead sometimes but uh, it looks like it'll work good thing to have in your glove box or your uh, everyday bag the two requirements that I that I wanted that the specs that I needed in the power pack was uh, of course USB outputs of 5 volts at a minimum of 2 amps per port this does it also have a 12 volt DC output as well and there it is 12 volts DC and throughout the video you'll understand why uh, those requirements were pretty uh, important to me and the rest of this is just you know bells and whistles that are just you know what do you call it uh, like a LED I really didn't need this but it's built in okay no problem I'll take it it's kind of a pain in the ass to use but anyway it's there so to me these two outputs are very important to me the 5 volts and 12 volts the 12 volts this connector here I noticed uh, I started doing some research on the uh, internet and come to find out that this connector is called a EC5 connector and here it is this piece right here uh, taken apart and as you can see uh, the kit comes with this sort of uh, jumper cable here and it's got the same EC5 connector here this being a uh, male connector or female rather and here's the uh, raw materials for 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 that connector so uh, this is the female uh, male yeah female end and I have uh, male ends as well 
to make various connectors and adapters pretty much so you want to adapt to all your equipment here so uh, all you got to do is right in this little cup here you uh, put some solder in there melt the solder in there make sure it adheres to the to the connector uh, stick your cable in there and uh, you just push the connector or that piece in through this end here and push it in there until it snaps and uh, I'll demonstrate this and by doing one connector for an adapter that I want to do so here we go a quick a quick little adapter cable so I want one end to be the EC5 female connector so I can interface it with the power pack and the other end is uh, it's already built in there this is a uh, scrap uh, cable that I keep around in a junk box uh, 12 volts sort of like uh, adapter to go into devices like scanners uh, other chargers and so forth this is a very common connector 12 volts DC connector to to go into uh, radios or whatnot so that's the uh, adapter I want to make so here I have bare copper this is sort of brass copper type deal I don't know exactly what but what I want to do is I want to tin the uh, the metal so this is uh, flux old school flux and I just want to sort of coat the inside just a little bit of flux and what the flux will do is it'll open up the pores of the metal while you heat it up and, and make a nice cohesive bond uh, it will prevent the metal from overheating and melting like the plastic insulator too it just makes life a hell of a lot easier so I want to co coat all my copper metal uh, with, with that flux and here we are with the process of tinning the two bare copper wire leads and you can hear that sizzle that's really good because uh, the solder just pretty much wicks right into the copper uh, strands really easily without having to overheat the strands and like I said it makes life a lot easier when you use flux when you're soldering get a nice little tinning and tinning is pretty much putting a, a coat of solder around the bare metal cop, uh, copper so these leads are tinned and what I like to do is sort of uh, uh, the cup here of the connector of one of these uh, terminals here I want to sort of gauge how deep it is so I could cut the cut the excess off so I won't have bare copper like showing from from like the middle here to the insulator I want I want this whole thing to kind of go inside the cup so I'm looking at maybe uh, one eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch deep about that much yeah that looks like a quarter of an inch now let me tend the uh, cup of the uh, terminals there and we already coated it with some what do you call it uh, flux so we're gonna fill the cup up with solder not to the top but you know at least at least part way through and the whole assembly is going to melt right in there and that looks about right and I have the terminals in this like little mini sort of vise there so it'll hold it in place and absorb most of the heat of the solder iron because this whole thing is going to get really hot unfortunately my solder thing here has flux in it too so it's adding even more it gets kind of really oily there we go you see that shine there let me put some more in this cup here just wait till it solidifies before you pull it out and you're gonna have to wait a little bit because uh, it's like a little molten you know glob of uh, solder there in the middle and it takes a little bit for it to kind of cool off if you pull out too soon uh, you might what what is you might get what's called uh, cold solder joints which is really brittle and the assembly could kind of come apart on you uh, later on after you put things together
so that one seems to be stuck so let's do the same to this guy right here I'm gonna have to remelt this and with the tinning of both sides it's easier for both pieces to kind of come in contact with each other for that nice uh, uh, bonding between the two components and that one looks like it's uh, done so that's what it looks like right there so with this you clean it off like I have excess flux here after that dries off is brittle and, and, and snaps off and then all you have to do really is just push the one end the open female end into the uh, one side of this here and push until it clicks in place and that pretty much uh, uh, holds it in place uh, one thing to to make sure everything is okay is make sure you have your polarity right like in this case the middle of the hole there of this connector there is the positive and the outside is the ground you want to make sure it matches up with your other end here that interfaces with your with your uh, power pack and you use that with a uh, voltmeter uh, do a continuity test and make sure you get those uh, uh, figured out and, and, and correctly assembled if not if they're if they're reversed you're gonna get a, a blue smoke machine and things are gonna burn up uh, you might burn up your pack you might damage your equipment that this thing is gonna be plugged into all sorts of problems so here the negative terminal is the round hole on this uh, EC5 connector. So I'm going to have to match that up with my newly made cable here. So what I'm holding on to is uh, the negative and there's my round hole. So here you see sort of like a D and then uh, an O. It goes on the O. So here you go, you push it in, push it all the way in until it snaps. You might have to get like uh, something to help you out with to push it in there. Hear that snap? Snap right in there. So here I'm going to go with the positive. That's going to go in there. And I'm going to use this probe here to kind of help it push it in there with force. So there you go. So here's your connector. Here's the power all. So this port here is always hot. There's always 12 volts here no matter what. It's the, directly at the output of the battery themselves inside this unit. It's not going through any circuitry unlike the USB ports here that are going through some internal circuitry. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. There it is. And as a final test, I want to make sure that my connector here it has the right polarity. So, like I said before, 12 volts on the inside and negative uh, ground on the outside sleeve. So I put my uh, meter here for voltage. I'm expecting 12 volts of DC voltage. Positive on the inside. Just go ahead and put it there. And negative on the outside and 12.3 volts positive polarity so everything matches so here's a device a battery charger uh, nickel cadmium uh, battery charger let's plug it in because this accepts 12 volts input looks like it's working to me it's charging up these two batteries now off of this battery pack here and that's the whole goal of this uh, exercise or my modification for my uh, field kit here 